we go. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Right. Ready to go? Go ahead. You know, we're here to get the ball out of the pocket real quickly. It's not that simple. What are the complexities of coming to getting the ball out of the pocket? Sure. I think, you know, number one starts with me getting the guys in a position where we can get some of those plays where they are ball out plays in a good rhythm against the, the right coverage structures. You know, but any time we drop back and throw the ball or, or any of our plays, it's always going to involve all 11 guys and everyone's going to have their, their part in that. And for the receivers with the timing and rhythm in which those throws get out, for Geno staying in that rhythm, uh, getting good uh, pre-snap coverage indicators, understanding what's going on in the play. And then uh, the, the O-line and the running backs doing a nice job being aggressive up front there. So we're going to continue continuously work at getting better and improving every single day in that area because it's something that, that we need to do and we will do. Yeah, I think Zach, you know, with his professional approach that he's had since the day he walked in the door, I think it really has helped him now as he's uh, been the lead back the last few weeks with Ken out. Uh, he's playing physical, playing tough, doing a good job knowing all the protections, all the plays, uh, what to do, and, uh, you know, looking for him to keep continuing to improve as he's been doing. I don't know if that's a specific part of the problem, but I think, you know, as we've talked through, had a great week of practice right here, starting yesterday with Wednesday and, and leading into today. I was really proud of the guys, the way they handled it and getting those front pad throws, getting those throws out in front so we can get our catch and run opportunities like we had a few weeks ago where we're able to produce a lot of those yards after catch. So I think that's one thing that we'll continue to work on throughout the course of the year of, of throwing those guys open and, and putting the ball in position and that great accuracy, which Chino knows he has and has displayed in, in the times that we're rolling and, and really working on that every day in practice. He hasn't uh, run as much this year, but when he does run it, he can still be effective. There's the two runs in the third quarter there. Mm -hmm. Do you want it to see more of that from him? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as the pocket allows it and, and different uh, rush structures present themselves, I think the ability for the quarterback to, to scramble on, especially in a, a third down scenario or in a, uh, a known passing scenario, just adds that extra layer to the defense that they know they have to defend. And I think Gino's done a good job of, you know, understanding when's the right time to do that uh, and when's the time where, you know, maybe the throwaway is better than, than putting himself at risk as the quarterback, you know, with the rush lanes as they're, as they're going. But it's something we'll talk about each week and continue, just like we talk about the, the time Timing in the rhythm of the pass game is one of the right times, one of the moments where Geno can show off his athleticism and, and gain the first down through a rush and also at the same time protecting himself. How do you feel like the offensive line has sort of held up with all, had a lot of moving parts this year and things like that? Obviously, mm -hmm. tough defensive line last week, the other people were missing. Yeah, I think the O-line, you know, as a whole, every week they're going to go against these these top-notch defensive linemen. Got it again this week, obviously, with Parsons and the, and the rest of the guys there. Uh, but I think they've done a good job of, you know, having to mix and match different guys playing together, uh, different, uh, you know, moving parts throughout the course of different weeks. Uh, but I think just like the O-line, just like our offense as a whole, it's something that we need to work out of this rut that we're in right now and continue to improve. And, and like I said, I'll reference back to Wednesday's practice where I couldn't be more proud of our team and knowing, you know, why do we have confidence moving forward? Because we got to group of guys that are so committed to improvement, starting with the offensive line and coming out here, you know, in a full padded practice. And, uh, you know, I say Wednesday, no, and I'm talking football language here. I have no idea what day of the week it actually is right now. But on our Wednesday schedule right there, the guys coming out there and, and able to, to run and hit and get back into it. And, and for us as an offense to get out of this, this rut that we're in, we need to show that. We need to show that improvement. And we know we can, and we have confidence in the players and ourselves in, in getting, that, uh, getting that done. Shane, you, you guys are 29th in the league in rushing attempts per game, around 23 a game or so. Is, is that anywhere close to where you guys want to be, or is it just kind of where things have gone? Sort of, how do you read into that? Yeah, I think you read into it in the games that we haven't had the, the first, second down success, you know, has really led to our rushing game being low totals. You know, whether you talk about the, you know, the, the different games that we've struggled offensively, we haven't gotten enough plays off. You know, we haven't gotten uh, been efficient enough like the first half in that San Francisco game, especially, you know, where we're getting in the three and out mode right there and so you just don't have enough carries and then you end up in a two minute mode and and you know so we're not where we want to be right there with the run totals uh due to some of the other circumstances that we need to keep working on and keep improving when the game is like in the situation where the game is in hand you know, do you feel like the run numbers are where you want to be 
Yeah, I think you know we've looked back at it. Different games where we've been in a in a more balanced attack. You know, those are where our run numbers have gotten better. You know, we talk about the you know getting over 100 yards in a game is is uh, is just a number, but those are those are helpful things. Anytime you can get that rush total and the completions total uh, together to get to a certain number, you know, whether it's 50 or whatever the number you want to get to, uh, those are times where you're usually playing in a in a good position in that game. And so for us, as always, looking back to getting to our true identity as an offense, whether you look at the the Detroit game or different games. Uh, throughout the course of this season or the last couple, you know, those balanced attacks, those games where we can utilize our play action, our run game, our keepers, our screens have started to come to life more this year. You know, those are the times when we're at our best, and that's where we're searching to, that continuous improvement to get to that stage in our offense. What's the one aspect, Shane, that if Geno Smith improves, your offense will take off? The one aspect I think for Gino is, you know, that timing and rhythm in the pass game right there, especially in the known passing uh, situations in the third down. But for those, to, you know, for those things to happen for Gino, there's a lot of things that go into it. And I think for us as an offense as a whole in the passing game, you know, taking all 11 every snap into account, including Gino, I think that's one thing where we're looking to take a step forward. How, uh, how good was Jackson's catch? It was unbelievable. You know, I think. Uh, I feel like that was one of those rare catches where the uh, the slow motion replays don't do the justice to it as it was on the sideline. I mean, from my vantage point, I'm standing right there and looking at that ball in the air, thinking, "Wow, this is uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to be able to even get a, a fingertip on the ball right here." And then, sure enough, just like he's done, you know, no one should be surprised. He's done this in practice multiple times from training camp on through. So just so impressive. And then to be able to finish the catch through the through the uh, you know hitting hit landing on the ground right there with it in that locked up position, just an unbelievable play and really displays his ball tracking skills uh, to a T right there where you can picture him, whether it's uh, Jackson or Willie Mays making that catch, you know, you can picture the same, the same body control, the same result. Stephen getting a little more confident kind of as the season's going on. Yeah, I definitely think Jackson's confidence is, is sky high right now. You know, he's able to battle through the, the tough start where he had his wrist injury and, you know, getting his uh, rapport going with everything. And now I think you see his his talents coming to life. And, and, you know, he goes out there, works hard every day. So it's no surprise that he's conti- going to continue to get better. His ball tracking skills, that's natural. Or is that he's worked at first? I think it's it's a combination. I think it's a God-given talent the guys have. You know those those guys that you can feel like they can go play in in any uh, any of the outfield positions in baseball. And naturally track the ball. You know like the Deshaun Jacksons or like Tyler Lockett's always been displaying to do. And then got in and the combination of those guys that can do that naturally like Jackson. And then they work like crazy at it as well. And uh, so I think those are the con- you know you take a good skill set and then you maximize it by by your work effort. Shane, did you have to alter game plan or anything last week with the injury Gina was dealing with or where he? fully available to you, everything you wanted to do. Yeah, I think after we see him in, in pregame warmups, able to throw, you know, it did take all the way until then to really see him, you know, where he was going to be at. But he was confident in it and and uh, was able to spin it well in pregame and, you know, was able to carry it into the game. Uh, yeah, I think there is a, it's a combination each week, you know, in the third down world where, uh, you know, the it's rare to get a team that does have true, you know, there's no 80%, 90% tendencies anymore. You know, guys on defense do a great job, just like just like Coach Quinn does with mixing and matching different mass coverages or playing man and, and showing man and playing zone. Uh, so we have to do a great job in those things of using some pre-snap tips and tells, but also that that pre-snap picture transitioning into the post-snap read uh, for the quarterback, for the receivers, tight ends, running backs. I think is something that we need to continue to keep getting better at to help our third down efforts. Is there a lot of in-game adjustment? Absolutely. When you're talking about different style of play and, you know, what's what's it looking like this game? Because generally speaking, game to game, you're going to see what that style of defense is going to be throughout that game. So, you know, you have a good plan going in. You have an understanding of what are the overall numbers look like? What are the analytics telling you? But then also the feel of the in the game. Okay, here's how they're playing us in this particular uh, week in the third down world right there. And what are we anticipating for the next third down call? That's definitely a combined effort right there. You know, we have different guys, their eyes are responsible to be in different spots on every single play uh, so that we make sure we're doing a good job maximizing seeing everything that's happening on the field and then combining that with the, the surfaces are always a good tool, you know, post uh, post drive right there to go back through and verify the things that, that everyone's seen on, on live action. Why do you like being in the field? I like being on the field to be able to communicate with all the guys, you know, from the offensive line to the quarterback with that instant feedback to the running backs, receivers, tight ends. Uh, so for me personally and for us as an offensive staff, you know, that's that's our uh, where we've seen that we uh, see an advantage there. Players have mentioned us higher than C. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think there's an urgency every week in the NFL, and I think um, after a performance like we had this past week, like I said, showing up on that on that uh, Wednesday, quote unquote, practice schedule there, uh, just the intensity, the sense of urgency, that urgent enjoyment though that the players still need to find, you know, because this is a uh, a game of excitement, a game of, of playing with energy. So finding that balance of okay, yeah, we're frustrated, we want to make this better, we want to fix this thing right now, but then also not not going outside the box of what's our fundamentals, what's our core techniques, and how do you make that urgency, use that urgency uh, to funnel it into the right place with your emotions and your energy out on the field. Anything else? Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you.